Ah, another wonderful episode of My Little Pony has graced us with its presence. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. <laughs> and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 3, The Gift of Mod Pie. And I'm going to let Lux go first because it's a Pie Sisters episode. <laughs> okay, this, this episode was just awesome for me. I was laughing a lot, especially near the end and at all the wonderful pinky expressions in this episode. Actually, all the expressions in this episode are period. It really shows off how far they've come with animating this show. Because <laughs> they really know how to push the limits of their animation software and stuff like that with these facial expressions. Whew. Especially when Pinkie Pie was looking through the rock pouch window. Her face was just glorious. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Maud. Be nice. Play nice. <laughs> it's like, so how did you meet Boulder? Well, it was a dark, like, little to know that. <laughs> I want to hear that story. I so want to hear that story. I hope it's an episode. It's how I want to hear it. So that's how you met Boulder. I can see why you like him so much now. <laughs> Uh, what, no commentary so far? I know you said I would go first and everything. I'm just going to let you have your moment. <laughs> and there were, like, several wonderful details in the episode, like, when Rarity's going, Do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this? You can actually see the Twi Cane fly by, and Twilight's doll fly by as well. I'm like, what are those two doing here? There's also a shark, though I don't know if that was actually indicating anything or not, but there was a shark. Also, I need to, like, do some research and see if the terms mod use are actual geological terms. They are actual geological terms. The question is, are they used correctly? Ah. And she speaks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, the Pie sisters are just such a wonderful contrast for each other, specifically Pinkie Pie and Maud. Maud is, hmm. Pinkie Pie is like, oh my god! <laughs> And there's just so many little wonderful things about the animation for Pinkie Pie and and Rarity's expressions and her reactions and stuff like that are great in this episode too. It's like your sister is impossible to shop for. <laughs> well, um, quick voice nod. Rarity also voiced the cop. Mm. Or I should say Tabitha Saint Germain. A wonderful name to say. Even though I had to say that three times, which I'm getting out. <laughs> 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 Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> I think that's everything until I remember more stuff. So <laughs> let's get on with it. <laughs> All right. So very obvious from the title that this was going to be a whole gifted the magi thing. Which I didn't figure out until the thing about Pinky exchanging her cannon for the bag. I was like, oh, this is a gifted the magi thing because in my brain I had the title reversed. It was like Maud's gift. So. <laughs> well, that's kind of what the episode was about, but. So many flaws with the rock pouch. One, we have pretty much established that Boulder is a sentient creature. Why are we carrying him around in a normal rock pouch? Wouldn't you want something more like a pet carrier with some ventilation and the ability to see out of it? You know, making it easier to communicate between Boulder and Maud. Also, what's the difference between a rock pouch and a uh, wristlet-style purse, tote bag, or satchel? Why is it so important that it be specifically a rock pouch when almost any bag would suit the purpose of a rock pouch? And speaking of the rock pouch, couldn't Pinkie Pie have had Rarity make one since she found out the usual shop is closed? I'm really sure Rarity could whip up one rather quickly during that day and still have a very nice result. And it would probably mean even more as a gift. Yes, very easily, because even if she didn't have access to all of her traditional equipment, she has friends in Manhattan that she could have borrowed sewing equipment from. I'm sure there was plenty of fabric anywhere that she could have gotten, and she's perfectly capable of coming up with the design. And that's the other thing, is why not just have Rarity make it? Because then it would have been more special and unique, and we could have had it done back in Ponyville, instead of this whole complicated thing of distract my sister so that I can go buy this thing for her. That also reminded me of the wonderful restaurant scene. 
both parts of it. The first part of, I'm going to have Pinkie Pie help me with this menu. I'm like, it's a menu and you're not really whispering, but moving on. <laughs> yeah, there, there was no whispering involved at any time. And I love that Pinkie Pie had a purple crown. That always makes me think Harold in the purple crown. Uh, I also like the fact that it went from a nice, clean line to crayon. Um, <laughs> for the map scenes. Also, I, I need to like do a screen cap and make a clean version of that Rarity icon on the map. Because that was a really nice rendering of Rarity for that uh, little icon they had on the map for. Yes, and that was a nice subplot of her looking to find a location for a shop in Manhattan. I also love how she went from, oh, darling, this is just a business trip. I'm not going to get caught up in all the magnificence of Manhattan. Oh my God, it's Manhattan. <laughs> that was another great moment showing uh, facial expressions. Pinkie Pie going, <laughs> And that reminds me of the other great scene of Rarity going, that's not you, Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie, you're like this. And she starts doing Pinkie Pie act annex, and I'm like, only Unicorn can pull that off. <laughs> of course, that and Pinkie Pie. Yes. And that also reminds me of the fact that Pinkie Pie and Maud have the same abilities. They're just slightly different. <laughs> Maud sense. And, ah, I can ignore you, turn on Holy! <laughs> how are you suddenly behind me? I just turned around and you were right there. And I loved how Rarity was playing it up to gently pressure that stallion into making the return trade. Mm -hmm. Just unclench your jaw and turn off the fire in your eyes. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, okay, this guy has proven that he is like a minion from a mob or something because he cracked underneath the pressure way too easily. He's been tortured like this before. <laughs> Well, he was obviously a shady character. I kept waiting for the bag to turn out to have been stolen and Pinkie Pie get in trouble for possessing stolen goods. But you have more stuff you were going to go over? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I also want to know what he was carrying in the rock pouch because we never see him empty it. And where on earth did he put the stuff that he had in the rock pouch? I can't believe he shoved it into the party cannon. Also, how common are party cannons now that he was able to, even though he saw it shoot off, that he was able to easily identify what it was and ascertain that it would be the most valuable thing that he could possibly trade for instead of, I don't know, just doing a simple transaction with bits. Mm -hmm. Which Pinkie Pie probably carries in her hair like everything else, apparently. <laughs> well, yes. And also, I really was surprised that Pinkie Pie only has one party cannon. I actually went back and rewatched part of the episode with Cheese Sandwich to double check when she was shoving the party cannon into the closet and, you know, that line, putting away my party cannon, deflating all my balloons, making sure that there was only one. Because how can she possibly have only one party cannon? Which she apparently pulls out of hammer space whenever she, whenever she needs it. <laughs> yes, so couldn't she have just traded it and then gotten it back through hammer space? <laughs> Also, where do you find cupcake-scented confetti? Because I'm not sure if I want that or not. There reminds me a lot of scratch and sniff snuff. Yes, but those are scratch and sniff. You can't pick up confetti and scratch it. The confetti has to be saturated enough with scent that it's obvious, yet you can't really use essential oils because those would stain the surfaces that the confetti falls onto. Mm, good point. Thank you for thinking of all the technical stuff. That also reminded me a little bit at the end. You wouldn't believe how much of this stuff I go through in a day. <laughs> well, if you'd quit pulling out the party cannon every two seconds, because I also call this episode for excessive use of the party cannon. I think this is probably the most it's gone off in a single episode. Oh, that reminds me of another great scene where, well, this place is rather cozy, but I would go crazy working in here. And then you, hear, you see in the background, and you see your radius face go, oh no. <laughs> and then boom. Also, who built that place to be that freaking small? Aren't there regulations for this? <laughs> but also, Manhattan is a take on Manhattan, and New York area is known for having incredibly small spaces. Kind of like Japanese hotel rooms. <laughs> this is a closet, right? right? Right, this is a closet, right? What do you mean it's the actual room? I can literally stand here and touch all the walls with my hands without moving. <laughs> 
please continue. Okay. And just Maude was really great because everything in town and all she was interested in was rocks and fissures and geological items. Everything that I showed her and she likes a crack. <laughs> well, it was a wonderful crack. <laughs> yes, but I've shopped for people like that. They don't need anything. They don't want anything. You've shopped for people like that because I am people like that. <laughs> and this is why I draw her art, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here's your gift. I made it myself. Took 18 hours. You better appreciate it. <laughs> no, I'm not like that. I just thought I would say that for comedy reasons. I don't know. Boulder um, meeting up with that other large rock and begs the question, are more rocks than just boulder sentient? Or is this all just kind of playful? Because boulder said that all those beautiful gemstones were stuck up. <laughs> kind of makes sense. I love how he just rolls her eyes. Well, I wouldn't have picked cut stones for mod either. I would have picked cabochon and I would have picked semi-precious. You know, <laughs> onyx, turquoise... Coral, even though coral isn't technically a stone. Also, when you said onyx, I suddenly saw a boulder going... I uh, suddenly saw a uh, mod raising a boulder to the Pokemon onyx and going, have fun. <laughs> 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 the onyx just looking at her like, huh? <laughs> I liked how quickly Rarity cracked under mod's regard of, where is my sister's party canon? <laughs> Yeah, that also reminds me of the fact that the voice act in this episode was dead on and excellent for everyone. Especially Maude, because there are several times when you can tell that she's actually really, really upset. Because her tone just changes ever so slightly. Like, what do you mean Pinky gave away her party canon? It's incredibly subtle voice acting for anything, but especially a children's cartoon show. Because it was just a slight change in tone, like... Ooh. <laughs> I am upset. Can't you tell? Yeah, and that is where it has both the similarity and the separation from the original Gift of the Magi story. Because in the original story, a husband and wife each give up their most valuable personal possession in order to buy a really nice gift for the other. But the problem is the items purchased go with the items that were sold. The wife selling her hair to buy her husband a watch chain, and the husband selling the watch to get her a beautiful set of combs to wear in her long, beautiful hair. We didn't have Maud and Pinkie Pie giving up their items at the same time. We had Pinkie Pie giving up her item to get Maud's item, and then Maud giving up said item to get Pinkie Pie's item back. I was just going to ask you about the what you thought about the differences between the story this was inspired by and this one. Well, Maud plans too far ahead, so she wouldn't have ended up giving up something precious to her in order to get Pinkie Pie's gift because she arranged things very far in advance, where Pinkie Pie thought she had everything taken care of and then freaked out and was willing to give up anything just so that she could get the gift she wanted to give. And I know that feeling because I go crazy sometimes going, I know exactly what I want to buy this person. Why is there not a store to sell it to me? <laughs> Though that also reminds me of the scene when Pinkie Pie goes to give it up. You never approach anyone you're willing to buy something from and go, I really need that. Ever. Yeah. You, you immediately give up your negotiation options right there. Because they now know that that's an important item to you and you will do anything to get it. It's more likely, it's better to just approach the person and go, Hey, how you doing? And strike up a conversation that eventually work your way around to, in some way, tricking them into offering the gift to you, because then you have more bargaining power. <laughs> yeah, so step one of negotiating. Never be the one who wants the item. Or never appear to be the one who wants the item. And try to make the item seem worthless to you, so they're more likely to keep the price down within a reasonable range. Yeah. Though we're not experts on negotiating, so don't take our advice into the real world. Disclaimer achieved. Our asses are now covered. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would just leave your pants on, we wouldn't have that problem. But we're ponies. We don't wear pants. <laughs>
least for the purposes of this particular pod episode of our podcast. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And Pinkie Pie was acting more how she could act with the ponies in Ponyville. Because in Ponyville, that tactic would have worked because she's friends with everyone in Ponyville. So even if the person wasn't willing to give up the item, they would have helped her figure out something. But no, she's in the big city and she makes a novice mistake. And her older sister bails her out, which is so very sweet. What's also very sweet is that they want... Rarity to join them next year. And it was especially sweet that Maud translated that portion of the new abbreviation. I also like the same thing you liked when, so what do you guys think? Do you think it's a good place? No. It's perfect. That was wonderful because Maud doesn't mince words. So you're like, no. You're like, oh, that was subtle. It's perfect. Oh, I get it. It's not good. It's great. Mm -hmm. The voice actor for Ramada is so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I love Rarity's freak out of, oh my god, what am I going to get you guys? You're <laughs> wonderful gift givers. Just because they want you along doesn't mean you have to participate in the gift giving tradition because they had you along this year and you neither gave nor received a gift. So why does being invited to join them on the next event automatically obligate you to give two gifts? Because it gives an opportunity in this episode for Pinkie Pie to go, no, it's the love of the gift that counts. Also, you can get me confetti. <laughs> and with Rarity being the spirit of generosity, she of course has to be giving. So, And that was part of why she bought in so wholeheartedly to helping Pinky with the gift. So do you have more nitpicks? I think that's about it. <laughs> Except what did that shady pony with the rock pouch do in order to earn a cutie mark of gold coins? And how many times was Pinkie Pie going to draw attention to herself by yelling in Manhattan? And you would think Manhattan is loud enough that nobody would really notice. <laughs> Except for the authorities. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because we previously established in the other two Manhattan episodes that for the most part, these ponies were not used to looking out for each other and were very much ignoring strangers. Well, I uh, think we should wrap things up. Mm -hmm. Ah, my final thoughts in this episode is it's awesome. I mean, I really, I really love the interaction between Maude and Pinkie Pie as always. Rarity was really great in this episode reacting with them as well all the facial expressions were awesome the animation was really nice really showed off what dhx can do with facial expressions the comedy was golden i was laughing all the time i even laughed really hard in a second watching of the episode <laughs> ah and really enjoyed it and can't wait for the next episode i really enjoyed this one too it's Nice when Pinkie Pie has played well, and I don't think there's been an episode really where Maude has been played poorly. Mm -hmm. So it is nice to see more of her, and it is nice to see that they are willing to fragment the main six more, because we didn't see any of the main six other than Pinkie Pie and Rarity. Mm -hmm. I think it really shows that the show is growing. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, I hope you've enjoyed... Our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 3, The Gift of Mod Pie. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below. Want to know more of what's going on? You can check Lux out on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Really like Lux's art? And would like some high quality versions or maybe some of your own? He is currently accepting commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.